Hey, and I'm behind the scene and should be back in front of the microphone. I apologize to you. Welcome back. We're talking about and taking some of your calls about former Governor Edwin Edwards. He's back on the scene after serving eight and a half years in the penitentiary and uh, has a job and hopefully will still be uh, uh, have a lot of long years to live, as we wish everyone. I thought it was interesting so that some of the pundits responses to Edwards of uh, reviewing his time in, in history. And, you know, if you're under 40 years old, you don't look back on the 70s. I'll just give you some observations. Um, I saw a group of reporters who had covered the legislature going back 40, 50 years. And I posed this question to them. Uh, and they'd worked for the Times, Picayune, and the Shreveport Times, papers all over the state. And I said, when, in your opinion, was the most progressive time in the state's history? They all said the 1970s, when Edwards was first elected governor, a new constitution, open meetings laws, Public Records Act, got the uh, politics out of picking architects and engineers that was so prevalent in years past. Most of the major reforms in the state, quite frankly, were put into place then. We didn't dedicate funds. We're not in the... In the uh, tight financial squeeze we are here now because no funds were dedicated. The legislature could pick and choose the priorities that they wanted that everyone's calling for today. And it wasn't just because of Edwards. There were some real giants back at that time in the legislature. I had the great privilege of serving with people like Senator Adrian DePlanche, who went on to become a federal judge in New Orleans, and uh, Claude Duval, a real giant down in Homa, who was a real scholar, very articulate, a real student of the Constitution. And I can give you a whole list of very bright legislators, Johnny Hankel from down in New Orleans, who became the Speaker of the House, the Young Turks, uh, Bubba Henry, who was the Speaker of the House then, and, uh, at, and all got there because of Edwin Edwards. So the guy did some pretty interesting things that are given accolades by those watchers who are there today. Now, <clears throat> I'm not here to uh, heed praise on Edwin Edwards because I had my differences with him. I ran against him for governor back in 1987. I thought I was going to be in the runoff with him. We both got beat, quite frankly. I recall a particular instance when I was in Jonesville, Louisiana, as a new state senator, and we got into a real knockdown drag out on the runway as we'd both given speeches in Jonesville, I believe, to the Chamber of Commerce up there. We're getting ready to fly back in the state plane to Baton Rouge, and I just got livid at him, and I was so mad I said, to heck with you, and I walked away and wouldn't even take the state plane back home. I wouldn't get on the state airplane with him. So I've had my highs and lows with the guy, but you got to give uh, the devil his due. A lot happened during the 70s and the 80s. He was tried three times, none of which involved the time he served in public life. And so I find it interesting that all the state's problems, according to some of the pundits who write particularly for some of the New Orleans publications, that it's all Edwards' fault. The guy's not been in public office for 16 years. He served eight and a half years in jail. There's been three governors who have served since he's there. But I'm just sure that 50 years from now, they're going to say, hey, we'd have made a lot of progress if it wasn't for that darn Edwin Edwards. So in any event, uh, we've got Edwards to kick around some more, I guess, because he's back home. And, and uh, uh, he'll be on the scene because he seems to be a very popular guy. I saw a poll shortly after Katrina. And people were asking all of South Louisiana if there was one governor you'd like to have in charge during this time post-Katrina to handle the flood and the cleanup, who would it be? And they said anybody. Huey Long coming right up to every governor we've had in the last hundred years. Overwhelmingly, the choice was Edwin Edwards, uh, that he could get things done according to a vast majority of the people in this state. And so the question is, what's the magnetism of this guy? Why is there so much interest in him? Why does he captivate the imagination of people in the state? If you love him or you hate him, you still want to hear about him. <laughs> you hear what he has to say. Uh, I published the book. I have a little publishing company. I published the book about Edwards, uh, Edwin Edwards, the governor of Louisiana. Leo Honeycutt got Leo to write the book, did a first-rate job. <coughs> When the book was done and it was time to pub publish the book, I had to determine how many copies to make available. Well, I started to print 5,000 copies, and then I figured, well, he'll be out of jail in about a year. There'll be some life to him, so maybe I'll have a lot of the copies for a few years, but let's go ahead with 10,000 because the more you print uh, in publishing like that, the cheaper the, the books are. So we went ahead and published 10,000. I was a little shaky, but I have a little warehouse we could store them in and thought we'd go ahead and do that. <clears throat> they came in about a week before Christmas. The 10,000 books sold out in two days. 
Well, gosh, I was really concerned then. I was happy, but had no books to sell. So I called the printers. We had them work throughout the weekend, paid them double overtime for another 10,000. Those sold out in four days. Books now sold 50,000 copies, and with Edwards back, if he's going to be able, uh, with the permission of his probation officer, to travel throughout the state, I think there will be another 50,000 books sold in the next year. What's the magnetism? What, what, why is he almost revered here in Louisiana, or even those who don't like him still are fascinated by the guy? Why is that? I've got a theory. My theory is that Edwin Edwards is basically representative of the state itself. Uh, this state has lost tremendous potential because of the way the oil and, and energy was handled. On the other hand, there's some magnetic, uh, wonderful things about Louisiana. It's got charm. It's got the great entertainment, the food. It's got the character, the creativity, uh, the athletes that rival uh, uh, any place you could find, not just in America, but in the world. And so there are certainly some great highs, yet it has some defects, and those defects can be major. It's held us back. There's no getting around this. And I, th I just kind of think that uh, Edwin Edwards uh, reflects uh, the overall focus and view of people in Louisiana. You know, elected officials in this state are no better or no worse than the people that put them in office. Now think about that. No better or no worse and the people that put them in office. So if you have a problem with Edwards and many of the things going on in Louisiana, then maybe just look in the mirror and see where the reason actually lies. It's up to us to set the standards and uh, set our goals and see what we accomplish. Uh, Edwin Edwards was a part of the history of this state. He made a number of contributions. Uh, he had his problems. He admitted to those problems. He served his time, and he's back home. I wish him well. I wish him a long, happy life. And you know what I hope? I hope we get him on this radio show here real soon <clears throat> to talk to folks all over the country about his experiences in being governor of Louisiana. Jim Brown here. I've got to hit a button. We'll be back right after this message.